How to cope with emotionally unintelligent people. Life can be unfair, and more often than not, you may not meet mature, emotionally aware human beings. Whether they are family members, colleagues, roommates, neighbors, friends, or just about anyone else, learn how to deal with emotionally inept fellow humans. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. I hope you are doing fantastic today. I'm doing marvelous. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to cope with emotionally unintelligent people. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's first explain what is emotional intelligence. For real, what is exactly emotional intelligence? Now, Emotional intelligence has been dubbed EQ, sometimes you hear EEI. The term is often mistakenly thrown around to indicate a variety of personality traits, but that's not quite of it. So it's not simply a series of negative characteristics because everyone is imperfect. Nobody is perfect, so everyone has a few of those negative characteristics, quote unquote, right? So who hasn't done something awful or been insensitive? at some point in their life. We all have been there. We've been there, we've seen it. Or to a lesser degree, while having a mother-in-law who talks non-stop is painful, it doesn't mean she is emotionally unintelligent. It just means that she's chatty, maybe excessively. Right? She can still be a deeply caring, sensitive, albeit highly annoying individual. So the difference here between having and lacking emotional intelligence is that these missteps are outliers, occasional slips, right? So when someone completely lacks emotional intelligence, they're missing the fundamental building blocks of what I call social awareness or, or social cognition. So those unpleasant moments become daily occurrences. So the key word here is daily occurrences. When something becomes a, an occurrence, a daily irregular occurrence, versus an outlier, you can say this person is unemotional. This person is emotionally inept, emotionally incapable. So what does low emotional intelligence really look like? Now, for starters, people with low EQ, with low emotional quotient, cannot deal with stress. They are easily agitated. They tend to blame others for the way they feel. They are great at holding grudges because they don't have the capacity to take responsibility for their feelings or for the role their actions played in creating these very situations, right? So you have, a, you have a tendency here to blame others, to always shift the blame onto others. They always find, trying to look for scapegoat, right? They were very good at scapegoating and they always escape their own responsibility. People with low emotional intelligence also believe that the world is against them and it's never their fault, right? So because, because of that psychological posture, they cannot deal with frustration or even worse, manage their emotions. Consequently, what happens is that they are prone, they tend to be prone to aggressive, combative, and sometimes manipulative behavior in order to bu to bully others into getting what they want. That's what I was, I was talking about earlier in terms of shifting the, the blame, right? So instead of owning up, owning their own mistakes, they're shifting the blame to somebody else and they are trying, they're using pretty shrewd. And, and the word here is, you know, the word shrewd here is it's very, I think w I can come up with a bigger word, but they try to manipulate people in order to bully them into getting what they want. People with emotionally, people with emotional ineptitude, emotional incapacity, they're typically self-centered. So they do things only to further their own agenda, no matter who they step on to get there, right? They never back down from an argument, never. They will, they will talk to you until midnight and continue in the next, the next day. So those people, Again, the people with uh, low IQ, low EQ could be on the on on they could be at a restaurant and still argue, even if the restaurant is cl is about to close. Right, so they, they will typically dig their heels in 
and the defender point to the bitter end because they cannot bear to lose faith right now you have to understand here the reason why emotional intelligence is, is key is because everybody gets affected and lack of emotional intelligence touches every aspect of uh, of our lives whether we are ourselves low eq individuals or high eq and the and the, the worst thing is that and this works in a vicious way because the person while they're trying to appear triumphant openly they suffer inside because lack of emotional intelligence touches every aspect of that person's life and ultimately yours right because you're forced to come into contact with them so low eq individuals lack the basic social skills required to deal with other people's emotions as well as their own and consequently this could lead to problems such as trouble holding jobs they have low self-esteem they have difficulties maintaining relationships and friendships they cannot create intimacy and they cannot sustain long-term long-term relationships and not just with partners with with uh, romantic partners but also with uh, relatives at work with friends so now that i have explained what emotional intelligence really is how do we make life less painful for ourselves while dealing with emotionally insensitive and unintelligent people let's really I'll, i will talk about that in the next section because avoidance is not really the solution here because the avoidance will clearly be the best course of action but that's only a luxury if we don't, if we don't have to meet them if we just meet them once in a while but if you have to deal with someone on a regular basis there must be and there is a better course of action to follow to deal with someone who is emotionally insensitive i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm talking today about low emotional intelligence and uh, how to cope with people who display that kind of, uh, I, will, I will call it, quote-unquote, character or behavioral traits. If you love the content clarity and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell. We'll surely appreciate that. And also comment below if you have inst if you had instances of uh, emotional abuse or emotional um, have you seen episodes of emotional intelligence or emotional um, insensitivity? Please share with the uh, with the Sweetie Kiwi Show community members. We really appreciate that. Also like this content and share. Now, how to deal with an, an emotionally unintelligent coworker? Now we've talked about. I'm going to talk to you about several instances at work, in life, socially, how to deal with people who are emotionally insensitive. Now, we all know the type, right? So you have someone at work, who, he or she is a loud mouth and uh, he or she constantly hijacks every conversation. They get very combative when people disagree with their viewpoint and then they don't understand why the room empties when they appear, right? They, they, they have no clue. Now, or you probably you probably have another colleague who constantly claims everyone's ideas as he, his or her own and thinks everyone in the office is out to get them. Again, you know, we were thinking about they were shifting the blames that they never recognize their own their own responsibilities, right? Now this kind of coworker, despite everything they've been doing, they ultimately wonder why nobody wants to go for drinks after five right or the the office gossip right you have the emotional quote-unquote emotional vampire who is extremely negative always negative and who loves to to you know the the bask they, they love telling you stories about your co-workers while you're trying to meet a deadline now the same person then acts incredibly offended when you finally snap after the 10th interruptions right so there is a good chance that these emotionally insensitive people they have never asked you once about your day how you doing what you're working on your family how uh, how the kids are doing or how they can help you right and as a matter of fact I'm, I'm i'm even sure that you get the point that we have a whole array of individuals in the workplace your among your colleagues your co-workers who will fit the bill here so in typical high stress situation with upset clients or tight deadlines you have 
some emotionally insensitive folks who that you have on your team and they are never never helping you even worse they are ruiners of productive teamwork they destroy a happy efficient work environment because they cannot be happy for anyone achieving what they haven't achieved that's where you have jealousy or envy coming into play here right so they will do anything to sabotage and disrupt others in order to make themselves look good and get ahead those folks are pretty you know they are very i'm not going to be too harsh on them but i'm just trying to describe the personality traits here those are the bad apples or tomatoes you need to get out of your your basket right because they are sabotaging they don't care about the team they only care about themselves and until they quit or get fired you have to deal with their insufferable behavior now if you are going to spend eight hours eight hours of infamy eight hours of uh, of pain eight hours of uh, hopelessness <laughs> with them you got to really find a strategy. You got to have a strategy. Now, how do you deal with them? Number one, you need to set boundaries. So if you sit next to an emotionally insensitive person, you want to set boundaries. You can put in headphones and you can ignore them when at all possible. And whenever they reach out to you, whenever they ask you something, whatever they want to have a conversation, you want to keep saying, I'm sorry, but I can't talk right now. This is very important. You want to have, you want to put the headphones in and volume up, way up. I'm talking way, way, way up. All right. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to document. You want to document, 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 document their behavior. If the behavior is insufferable, is unbearable, you need to document that. Evidence is very important. Don't allow them to derail your hard work, damage your, your reputation or take you down with them, right? Because if somebody uh, is sending you negative vibes, you got to strike back. But because we are in the work environment, you want to limit the damage and you want to just mount a solid defense should things go for the worse, right? Now, this might seem like a pain in the backside, but an extra work on your end. But remember, if they are on your team and drop the ball, you can't bet your next paycheck they will point the finger at you or a coworker. So you need to have a backup plan. You need to detail what was agreed upon and what actually happened to protect yourself and your team. The next thing you need to do is to escalate. So you set boundaries first. You know, don't bother me. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy. Your documents, the uh, the occurrences. This could be a text message. This could, this could be an email and once you have that take it higher up escalate don't be afraid to speak to your manager or feeling that HR human resources because listen at the end of the day it's not your job to manage a low EQ and low EQ's unacceptable behavior because such a person is toxic and can easily bring an entire office down with his or her drama and negativity so remember this colleague this person maybe a year ago you didn't know them and a year from now you you might not even remember they even existed they're not your grandmother they're not your grandfather they're not blood they're not family they're not friends they're not your classmates no so this person is not even a friend so you don't like the person it's okay the rest of the office doesn't either so professional behavior courtesy civility are all that is required of you so keep all interaction short, sweet, and straight to the point. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic and you are enjoying this conversation. I'm enjoying this conversation, by the way. And uh, we were talking about how to cope with emotionally unintelligent people. So I've, I've given you uh, some tips around how to handle such a person at work. Now let's talk about how to cope with a difficult entourage. I'm talking here about family, friends, and neighbors. Now, the thing is that those people, you cannot just uh, delete them from your life, right? They're family. Friends you might, but families you cannot. Now you probably have, you probably see an, an aunt or uncle at, um, 
at a family reunion or Thanksgiving dinner and uh, you know that ain't her life is constantly on uh, she's a constant mess she keeps asking you and your parents for money or you have uh, an uncle who always uh, denigrates everybody says connotative says and pejorative words when describing people and then they say horrible things happen once they are out of the family so the the and you, or you also hear about some friends so-called friends who when you mention your recent promotion they dismiss you or downplay your news and change the subject back to his or her right you have those those bffs who will never take responsibility for their feelings of insecurity and low self-worth so we all have those those sort of uh, negative people around us people who are emotionally insensitive and they don't then never are able to understand where we're coming from and what's really happening in our life at this particular moment right now you have to understand that those people are what psychologists call passive aggressive right so for example if you have if somebody is passive aggressive it's someone who's not really out there openly aggressive but by their actions and their behavior you can you can detect some kind of aggression right so for example if you have let's say you buy a new you buy a new house or you buy a new car and you have somebody who envies you he or she might buy a car that is more expensive or bigger or better or whatever right and then they turn they turn around and tell you oh no actually you know i love you i i like you i want to be nice to you but deep inside you know there is some kind of constant competition going on so now unfortunately we cannot put in headphones at the dinner table or ask to be <laughs> teleported into another family right we are born into a family we have to stay in the family until death do you or us part so you cannot escape and escape is not escape could be a good short term or very very short term solution but it's not a good it's not a long term solution here are three long term solutions that you can use to handle people with um, low EQ in your family, in your friend entourage or neighbors. Number one, never engage. Don't engage. When it comes to family or neighbors, while you cannot completely ignore them, you can certainly disengage. What I'm trying to say here is that the person might continue his or her hurtful behavior if he's or he or she is getting a response, right? But if you act disinterested indifferent or you just stop responding they'll realize they're having a conversation with themselves and nobody likes to have a monologue so they 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 will make sure they always get a reaction but remember the people with low eq they are selfish so if the conversation no longer revolves around them and they are no longer getting the attention they crave they'll just disappear and get it elsewhere don't think they just uh, zero in they are zero in on you no if they don't get the response if you're not feeding that that ocean of emotional unintelligence of or emotional insensitivity if you're not feeding that the the, the ocean will just the move elsewhere so number one do not engage number two you want to talk it out and you want to act on it so if you cannot run or the stakes are too high it's better and more effective to stand your ground and talk it out this is especially important if you have close family members and you have some kind of situation where it's a parent or a sibling who is being hurtful right so you want to in this kind of conversations are best handled in private not in, not at dinner table no you want to have a private conversation with the interested party with the emotionally insensitive person so you can point out when they are overstepping your boundaries how they make you feel and what you will do if they continue this behavior now it is important when you make a promise to follow through you want to follow through every time the behavior rears its ugly head right so you want to pe people who have low EQ generally don't have great listening skills so sometimes the best way to get through to them and protect yourself and that's the thing you want to protect yourself is by establishing firm and strict consequences for improper behavior so once you do not engage or you talk it out and act on it if they continue you want to cut ties 
now i'm saying that this is this is this should be the the extreme solution here the most extreme solution the final solutions and i understand it's not easy to 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 adopt this kind of solution when it comes to family right because sometimes for the sake of your mental well-being and self-preservation you got to cut ties with family temporarily or even permanently this is this is important now blood may be thicker than water but people have limits if you've tried it all and there is no change you may have to cut that family member out of your life and now nothing is uh, permanent if uh, he or she somehow realizes that uh, something went wrong in the first place and he or she ma made made amends you can bring him or her back into your life so when it comes to neighbors and friends because for families that's what i just said for neighbors and friends there is no reason to hang in there think about it you want to ditch people who impact your life negatively they are constantly hurtful or toxic remember that having a friend is a privilege not a right so if that person cannot treat you well does not understand your preferences your needs your passions and isn't willing to take responsibility for their behavior and emotions my friend please move on asap it's better to you want to redirect your energy into something productive something positive you want to surround yourself with people who genuinely care for you and respect you now for neighbors they may leave next door but you don't have to have anything more than a high bye relationship with them so long as they are setting fire they're not setting fire to your lawn you can keep the conversation to a bare 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 minimum all right so this is it folks we're going to have a conversation today around how to cope with emotionally unintelligent people i spoke about what exactly is emotional intelligence how to deal with an emotionally how to deal with an emotionally unintelligent co-worker and also how to cope with a difficult entourage meaning family friends and neighbors i will see you next time but until then remember stay emotionally intelligent